thing. All right, so we're saying today's title is REST. REST is an acronym meaning reflect, encourage, share, and testify, testify. And using for our devotional text, Matthew 11, 28 and 29, which says, come unto me. So it's a command. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. So it's a both a command in verse 28 and verse 29. It's a promise. Who says amen? Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Good, good, good. All right. So here, here's how this verse can connect to the acronym of rest. Reflect. Uh, what's the E for again? Encourage. Encourage. And the S. Share. And the T. Testify. 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 Okay, okay, good. So reflect. Reflect. Reflect in the text. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. All right? So we need to reflect on the teachings of Christ and his example of humility and gentleness. We're still talking about marriage and relationships. Reflect. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Encourage, encourage. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. So Jesus encourages us by offering us rest and peace. Share. Where do we find share? Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden so this is an invitation to rest right and it's something that we can share with others who are burdened does that make sense uh testify testify i will give you rest right so we need to testify of the rest and peace that Jesus has given you. So today we are doing a little reflection, reflection and testifying, right? That's the purpose of today. We want to reflect on the past 10 weeks uh, that we have been going through our marital issues series. And I want to invite you to share your insights or testimonies about how the teachings have impacted your understanding uh, of marriage or your own relationships, All right? So you want to be open and uh, this is a safe space to share, but you also want to be mindful of others you may want to share. So I, I want to uh, give us probably about two minutes to share when we are sharing, all right? About two minutes, about two minutes. Okay, so here are some guiding questions, right? I want to guide the sharing. And again, we're inviting you to participate, to share a testimony or reflection, all right? So I want to ask three questions. Question number one, what's one key lesson that you have learned over the past 10 weeks, past 10 weeks? One key lesson, again, we want to allow time for others, so I will stop you when the two minutes have expired, if you take that long, if you take that long. So who'll be first, who'll be first? Yes. Uh, has my well, mic? What I've learned is okay. um, to have you know, respect for what each other has to say. Listen. Um, um, listen to what, you know, not just your opinion alone, but listen and uh, whether you agree or not, you accept um, what the individual has to say. And 
try to work things out, work things out in a respectful, Christ-like way, okay. um, in a manner. And but yeah, those are some of the things I've learned. Um... Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, some of the things that I've learned also is that I uh, listened to some of your uh, teachings before uh, my marriage. Uh, I think it would have really uh, added some insight onto uh, how serious marriage is. Um, if uh, ask, ask more questions and be more temperate and more uh, patient yes. with the Lord mm -hmm. and finding yes. yes. find me a mm -hmm. uh, husband because um, uh, you've had some good lessons and some timely lessons but it's not to say that I can't use what I've learned to help somebody else uh, that has not married yet but a contemplating marriage and use that insight that I've received to help them ask mm -hmm. the questions that they need to ask before they say I do and uh and and pray more and study more yeah. uh sometimes you may find that really you're not ready to get married when like you thought you was um after listening to some of those lessons because they really uh they really hit home they touch the soul to make you think and um as you said they allow you to reflect, uh, to even put your mind in perspective as to, am I ready? How would I be uh, uh, the wife that I need to be in? How would I need to act? All of that would come to mind's eye mm -hmm. before you say I do. And you may find out that you really don't want to it, it, anyway at that time because you have uh, got some information that is showing you uh, that you're not ready. Uh, need to wait more on the Lord, study more about the Lord and, Amen. and ask him Amen. some more questions mm -hmm. to prepare mm -hmm. you to be sure without a doubt that you're ready to embark upon this new phase in your life. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I tell you, <laughs> it's not as easy to, to say what you won't do once you say I do. Because mm -hmm. now you, you, some, some may feel stuck and they feel like, oh shoot. You know, if I know what I know now, if I knew then, I wouldn't have got married. And, okay. and that's right. what it makes you do. That's your alarm. So I right, thank you. You, you, mm -hmm. you can come back around. Thanks. Who's next? We'd like to share again. Come on now, don't be shy. Any more for question one? What's one key lesson you have learned over the past 10 weeks? One key lesson that you have learned from the series? Now, well, God has to be in the center of all of this. You have to see God. Mm -hmm. You can't do this on your own. You have God has to be the major role in all of this to seek that wisdom and that guidance, else it will fail. <laughs> Okay. Amen. Okay. Who's next? Also, I can come back around. I'm I'm back around mm -hmm. again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, as my sister said, you have to have the Lord as the center of it. But at the same time, I, I I can say that even in marriage, I have matured a little more as far as um, being with God and knowing God and how he can work through any situation. Um, marriage is a, a different role for a lot of people. Once you, you partake of it, uh, you find out a lot about your spouse and, and vice versa. They find out a lot about you. And then you you listen and you as as young adults, 
they want to try out the merchandise before they actually say I do because they feel like, well, once I say I do, I don't know if they can do. <laughs> you know, I don't know what they can do what they say they can do. Um, so it, it gives you something to think about. And that's where love comes in. You have to love a person to the point that if they can't, you have a relationship that is still strong enough to keep you together with God being the glue. Amen. 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 Okay. Who's next? I mean, folks, remember we said today is sharing and we want everybody to share. You don't have to give anything personal, but what you may have learned. If you didn't learn anything. Um, good morning. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. I, and I think from um, all the presentation that you have done, what's sick with me is to have uh, mutual respect and understanding uh, for each other. Amen. Uh, Absolutely. Amen. Yes. So um the respect or even um giving your all, you give one hundred percent. I think I we had said that before. You give one hundred percent no matter what, even if the other person is not giving theirs, but you are doing it not for yourself, but you're doing it as unto Christ. Yes. What Christ would mm -hmm. have done when Christ was there, the day um he came to die for us. They beat him up even on the cross. Um, he he had said, Father, forgive them. So we have to have forgiveness in our heart for one another and mm -hmm. um, respect and love. And the, the love will come automatically, I think. Um, once and I think my husband I said that before. When you married somebody, you 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 don't marry for because you want that person to make you um happy, but you come with that state of happiness in you and then by beholding we become change if you um that fragrance of love of happiness of understanding and if you keep doing that even if the other person is not doing it at the end the person will have to come and become changed by god's grace and Amen. i told you my story Amen. before with the with the with the sleepers um, all right, uh, time, time. Oh, it, time already. Okay, yes. all right. <laughs> you only need to come back around. Two minutes, two minutes. See, you can come back around. All right, who's next? I want to give as much people a chance as possible. Come on, be sharing. What's one key lesson you have learned over the past ten weeks? Even if you weren't here for the entire ten weeks, whatever session that you saw, what is one key lesson? The key word is one. What is one key lesson you have learned over the past 10 weeks? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm not quite sure, but I think I learned about communication, how effective communication is key in the relationship. We got to. Amen. Amen to each other and then we get to some you know compromise okay good good thank you thank you so all this appreciate it all right who's next uh if you this is your first time we welcome you welcome you and feel free to participate uh, even if you didn't get any of the other sessions and you're married, uh, what is one key lesson you have learned over your marriage? So I, I've seen a name there I haven't seen before. Lincoln, welcome. Yes, thank you so much. Good morning. Uh, it's my first time I got the message sent to me. I'm not sure who sent it to me this morning, um, but... Um... I uh, appreciate uh, whoever it was that sent it to me. Um, let me say that I have not been um, here before. As I say, it's my first time. Mm -hmm. um, something that a lady said um, a few minutes ago, she said that it's not, um, you're doing it for to, to help, help, help someone else. But I think that while you're helping somebody else, I think you're also um, 
getting help also from 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 helping someone else. Yes. So I think it's not just helping someone else, but it's also helping you, helping you to grow um, um, in your marriage. Um, it's it's um, I've been married for a number of years, and um, I'm from the UK, and mm-hmm. um, um, it's it's. Even though you've been married for a number of years, there's always something happening in the marriage. But I think um, you learn as you learn to love Christ, you learn to love your your your, your wife, um, amen, as, amen, you know, as yourself. And so and so, yes, the the the, the important uh, part of it is that, like someone said earlier, is getting close to Jesus. And once you've got Christ in your heart, then everything you do will be done because of your love for Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Th- thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Um, how do you pronounce your last name? Ray? Ray, W-R-A-Y. Ray Lincoln, Lincoln Ray, as in Ray Nevy. <laughs> okay, great, great. <laughs> We're glad to have you, Mr. Ray. Please welcome uh, Mr. Ray as uh, much welcome, as you can welcome. in the text. Come again. Thank Come again. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, yeah. Sorry, but by the way, I'm, I'm on my way to the, the, the eye clinic, so I'm going to be leaving you very soon because uh, I have an appointment at um, I'm a little bit late right now. I'm on my way there for eight. Sure, so sure. If I leave you, or I might try and listen to you um, on, you know, without saying anything. I'll just, you know, certainly, listen. certainly. Right, thank, thank you so, so much. much. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Let me just ask also. You, you you do this every day? Uh, or... well, we are on every day, uh, but uh-huh. I'm I'm here on every Tuesday. We we're doing a okay. series called uh, Marital Issues Using Biblical uh-huh. Examples every Tuesday. Right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, Thank you. you. You're welcome. All Thank right. you. Bye-bye. All right. Are there any more answers for question one? One key lesson that you have learned over the past 10 weeks? If not, Hi. we move to question two. Hi, good morning. This is Fiona. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I think one of the things I've learned just by listening about marriage is being an active listener. I'm learning that um, I need to it's a life lesson. Learning that love is not just doing, is, is not for me, but doing what is in the best interest of the other person. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, um, I may not enjoy, and we, um, to pluralize it, um, enjoy doing something, but knowing that this will make the other person happy and engaging that person that way, it becomes selfless. And by doing that, it's, you know, the other person has learned to reciprocate and become selfless by demonstrating that in our marriage. Um, being married for so long, and it's um, it's a roller coaster, mm-hmm. and I yeah, learn over the years. So sometimes you have to just learn to, as I would say, um, ride with the waves and stuff like that. Because um, the other person is going through things too, and they are learning. We're learning about each other, mm-hmm. and as we learn to grow and love each other. I think is the same way that Christ, the demonstration of the love of Christ for us, that he accepts us for who we are, but it loves unconditionally. And even if we miss our mistakes, our um, frailty, our mishaps and everything, he continues to work on us each and every day. So it's the same thing he wants us to do in our marriage, to forgive, to love, to honor, to be committed, and to be loyal to each other even as he is unto us, being faithful. So that's what I have learned, you know, as I go and um, as I listen to this program, when I'm able to get on. So thank you, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right on time. You have, you have six seconds left. Beautiful. <laughs> Amen. Right. Okay, who's next? Who's next? Okay, I'm back around again. Okay. Okay, I like to thank the Lord for learning also uh, in in marriage that you don't marry for, like my sister say, for happiness or for someone to give you happiness. If you're not happy before you marry and you don't have joy in your heart before you marry and you don't have the source that can give you those things before you marry, then you cannot count on another person to do it for you. Amen. And another reason why you don't marry is to control your spouse, because when you're married, you're supposed to be mature in adults. So you're grown. You're each grown. No one should be able to uh, should have to beat another one into submission to do anything that should have been taken care of before you got married. 
uh, if you found if you waited long enough to find out uh, what type of spouse you're going to have. Now, sometimes there are some that are narcissists and you don't know, you know, you are taken in, you believe what they say and, and everything. But again, you can't rush it. Yeah, you have to take your time when you get married or contemplate marriage and you have to study more. Go to some marriage counselings, marriage seminars. You don't have to be married to go there and, and just get some more insight onto the kind of life you're going to be living when you get married. This will give you an idea, too, if, if the person that you're marrying is, is marriage material, because some people, if you knew some things and that you knew about them, you would not marry them. And that's what sometimes they count on that you're not know until you get married. Now I got you, you know, you can't go into your mind and we can't own nobody. We cannot own any individual. We can okay. only uh, speak for who we are and govern ourselves. Amen. 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 And, Amen. and of course, um, if we follow the principles we talked about uh, in our attempt to get married, you know, generalizing, socializing and then personalizing all the while you're building a friendship uh, it doesn't say that you know the person uh, might show everything about themselves but you get to know a whole lot uh, before you say I do and after you said I do now you want to say I don't think so anymore right the, the key thing like we said is take time pray get to know the person build a friendship get friends around don't Go out with the person alone um, wow. until the personalization stage. For all the while, your friends are watching as well. Yeah? And it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you've been married before and got divorced and remarrying. You want to do things differently. Right? Don't say, well, I'm wow. grown. You know, I'm smarter now. Yeah, you might be smarter. But if you do the same thing again, you'll get the same result. Wow. All right, question number two. Has any particular can I say something before we may, we move to question number two, please? Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I'll give you this opportunity. Uh, but anybody Thank else? You, okay, once we move, we'll be gone. But go Thank ahead. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, I was on in um I think it's probably one morning I came on um because the link was sent to me. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I'm on the Thursday evening program. But one okay. morning I came on this the morning program, and it's like God would have structured it for me to be there because mm -hmm. I was really challenged with my marriage relationship the night before, mm -hmm. and still had some issues hanging on my mind in the morning, and I would have shared my um my feelings in prayer and my response on that morning. But I think that in my own experience, being married for 13 years now, okay. marriage relationship is a growing process like everything else. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes we make um, choices of to marry in our spouse and everything that um, as the marriage grow, situation changes, life changes, because when I get married, I didn't consider I think, have we lost you? Uh, Miss Pompey, I think we may have lost you. I'm hearing a dog barking, but we can't hear you. Know a little more, or maybe okay. even a little better. And you have. I think we've lost her again. Yep, we've lost her now. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, somebody else. All right. So, let's go to the second question. Trying to behave as though the past didn't happen. Okay. Forgiving because you're acknowledging. Is somebody playing a recording? All right. Uh, Miracle, I've made you co-host, so help me out with the background noises. Okay. 
Miracle. Okay. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. All right, let's continue. Um, number two, has any particular biblical couple or story resonated with you over the last 10 weeks? Has any uh, particular biblical couple that we talked about or story uh, resonated with you? Please re okay, repeat the question. Is that what you're saying? The question yes. was, has any particular biblical couple that we've talked about, any of the couples from the Bible, or stories resonated with you? And if so, how? How have they resonated with you? Uh, for me, it was definitely Ruth, Boaz, and even bringing in Naomi, because it that that story is still alive today with all our classism, racism, and you know people who don't belong, even yeah. though they might have riches, they are decent, God fearing people. We still use their past to hold it against them. But, you know, I just like the beautiful thing that God did when he brought together Ruth and Boaz. And it was so much so that it came straight down to his lineage. Amen. So that was, that was the one for me. Amen. All right. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Who's next? All right. Just. Sister Pompey just apologized for having connection problems. That's no worries at all. No problem at all. I think it was, I think you did one with Moab. Did with who? With Moab? About, yeah, Moab. I can't think of like the two I, people's name. They were old people. Um, <laughs> I don't remember doing what well, I, I did. Remember. Abraham and I, Sarah probably. That could have been them. Uh that is nothing that's too impossible for the Lord uh, yeah. in your marriage. Uh, just like he gave them children at that mm -hmm. tender age of 100 or over. It is nothing that he can't do to keep a marriage together uh, if we trust him and willing to do what he tells us to do in the word. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. All right. Anybody else? Any particular biblical couple of story that has resonated with you? And how has it resonated with you? Come on, folks, we want to keep it moving. Oh, can I do one more? Another beautiful one. Mm -hmm. It's the same theory, but it's the part where you did Hagar part. Okay. You know, the helping God and, you know, even though God made it plain that this, I don't need no help. You know, it, that story showed God's mercy and love to everyone when he met Hagar where he was, where she was. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you would say, baby girl, go back home. <laughs> <laughs> go home. I have plans for your son to have been. It's just that I don't need no help. Mm -hmm. And this will not be the child, but I will make him a great nation. So that too. That one too. Amen. Thank you for sharing. All right. Who's next? Who's next? Abigail and Nima. Uh, uh, this is Isaac. Ab Abigail and and the Unable, okay. Despite how crude he was, she was able to reach out to him. She knew his weak spots. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. 
All right, who's next? Is there anybody that was in the Bible and a couple that backslid? I know the one that had promised to give God the money. Um, we haven't covered those yet. I think next week, next week we might do that. You're, you're ahead of us. We haven't reached, <laughs> okay. reached, we haven't reached that one yet. Okay. But that, so there's not been a couple that has backslid. Once you get married and you marry the person from what you know about them, then you get married and you find out, well, they're not exactly who you really thought they were, or who they say they were uh, in a situation like that. You know, it, it's kind of hard to pick up your pieces and see exactly what you're going to do. You're going to run on and see what the end brings. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll come back to who they once were. Or do you just pack your bag, you know, uh, and put all trust in God aside and move on? Maybe you and say maybe you made a mistake. Okay. All right, so we have four couples so far that we talked about. Anybody else want to add? If not, we move to our last question. Going once, going twice. Um, Pastor, can I, the question that she just asked, that if there was anybody in the Bible who married somebody and they didn't turn out to be who... I can think of two. I'm sure poor Abigail, I don't know, in that time you didn't have much choice, but she didn't know that her husband was all that terrible. I'm sure I'm thinking. And then there is David and Saul's daughter as well. Mm -hmm. You know, because he loved her and he reclaimed her, but you could see the the haughtiness and the pride in her. And, you know, I'm sure that David really got a good view of just how proud and exalted she was and yeah. how humble and a true worship of God he was. And that wasn't for her. She was for the earthly position of being exalted and kingly and queenly. Yeah, and that's a good point because you remember that uh, Saul had asked David for 100 foreskins of the Philistines. And he would give him his daughter in marriage. And David coming from the field of the shepherd boy, no royalty. As far as he was concerned, he had no royalty, no royal blood. And he was so anxious to marry the daughter. He got 200 foreskins, uh, not knowing what he was getting into. So, you know, not everything that glitters is gold. There's something called fool's gold as well. And so we need to be careful and prayerful. Uh, getting into marriage, you know, some people want to get married because mm -hmm. they want to have legal sex. You know what I'm saying? They want to do it right, but you know, Amen. Uh, that that goes for a while. But if you don't have a good friendship, you know, then everything goes goes south. Everything goes south. Amen. All right. So the last question. Also, Pastor, can I say one more thing? Sure, sure. But, and some people also get married because they want citizenship. Well, uh, I've, yeah, that's a big one. Experienced a lot of, of of several relationships in that, like that, and it, it usually flops. Um, once they get citizenship, it, it's just like saying the marriage has been annulled mm -hmm. because that's the only reason why they're married, and and then they move on and and go into the land of opportunity, which the United States is supposed to be, and they do do their own thing, and then they really find a husband that they really wanted instead of the one that they chose just to to be a part of the what they consider the land of opportunity. Amen. Amen. All right, the last question is how how tell us how have you applied any of the teachings in your own marriage or relationships? How have you applied any of the teachings in your own marriage or relationships everybody got a question how have you applied any of the teachings we've covered the last 10 weeks 
in your own marriage or relationships. All right, it seems as though um, everybody has lost their power source and may have fallen off of the platform. Testing, one, two, three. I'm just thinking, Pastor, because uh, <laughs> they, they, it's a mixture of, of, of what you have, some of the teachings. It's not all uh, from the same lesson, you know, over uh, a period of time. Uh, uh there's so much uh i know it was one you did about the the computer uh something about a computer and you, you did an uh, acronym with that um i think you have to pause sometimes you have to wait uh, <laughs> you, you don't speak uh sometimes it just pays just to listen and um oh uh, consider your spouse, consider yeah, yeah, yourself, that's what you're going to say. So how have um, you applied it to your life, to your marriage, uh, or I, to I, relationships? I, I've, um, I've gotten to the point and I don't argue. I try not to to cause an argument. Uh, uh, I, I don't have to always be right <laughs> to be happy. Um, uh, but I also know that I'm an individual in my marriage. Mm -hmm. And my opinions, just as my spouse's opinions, uh, should both matter to to both of us. Um, and I don't argue. And as I said, don't let the sun go down uh, on your argument. You know, man up, woman up. You know, you did something, you shouldn't have said something. You apologize and move on. Mature. Okay. Uh, I thank God for that. Amen. 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 All right. Who's next? Have you applied any of the teachings in your own marriage or relationship so far? Um, for me, I the first one I applied was um listening more. Don't um talk the person, and I reminded myself all the time that it was disrespectful to do so. And for me, since that, we haven't had a good argument because I thought when we argue sometimes, we do have some good arguments. <laughs> but no, I cannot show that out through the door that there's no good argument. There's good <laughs> communication. <laughs> and, and um, you know, I've gone further with applying the respect and I've used more companies just trying to focus on the positive, you know, positive things that I suppose is that he does. And I compliment him more. And I find that he's doing the same. At first, I hear this little waiting, like, what do you want now? What game is this? <laughs> but no, he's ready with the compliment. And, you know, as I said before, normally when I cut him off and then he's cutting me off and I'm like, I'm talking, I'm still talking. And he's like, well, you do the same thing to me. I find that, you know, even though I don't tell him that's what I'm doing, like, oh, I didn't go to him and say, I'm going to practice this and you need to know it. I just put it into action. So when I'm talking and he cuts me off and I say, I was speaking and you just cut me off. He said, oh, oh I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry. Sometimes okay. you say, hold your point. Can I just say this first? But it wasn't like that before. Before it was that. You do the same thing. Why are you pointing it out to me? <laughs> amen, amen, but amen. Thank God. I, you know, I've applied many other little things, but those were the, the, those are the, you know, the better things that I see quick results coming from. And as I said, we, you know, there's no good argument anymore. We don't have time to argue anymore. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Who's next this year? Have you applied any of the teachings in your own marriage or relationships? Also, Pastor, as my sister just got through seeing, uh, I've also realized too, just from that, that I sometimes cut my husband off and I uh, go have to go back and apologize and say, well, uh -uh, babe, I'm sorry. Um, I, I just need to say one thing. And he usually will go ahead and allow me to say it. But, uh, 
Yes, that, that is so true. Sometimes we have to learn to disagree, to, to agree to disagree also, mm -hmm. uh, just to not uh, cause an a, a argument or to have things run smooth because uh, we're both strong-willed. Um, I'd like to uh, thank the Lord for them using uh, those, you know, those lessons to understand that what our, our spouse has to say is very important. And we usually uh, try to beat each other giving uh, and I love each other, doing things for each other mm -hmm. as well. And, and, and so two things I want to respond to. One is uh, out giving each other and you especially want to practice that out giving when you're upset with each other because uh, that kind of distracts you from your upsetness. And when you're kind, I think somebody mentioned earlier, when you're giving to somebody, you're doing good, uh, you know, your body releases serotonin and dopamine, all those good feelings, uh, neurotransmitters, and it, it changes your mood, your attitude as well. All right. So that's powerful. And the second thing is, um, I think other people kind of hinted towards it. Uh, <laughs> being strong-willed is not always God's will, right? Um, and you you want to submit to your husband as we, as we did in our first, very first study. Uh, but both of you have to submit to each other. But God, first of all, calls the wife to submit and calls the husband to love. And loving um, a loving husband creates the atmosphere for a wife to submit, not be afraid to submit. But most times when we are afraid to submit, we say we strong will because we have been hurt in the past. Yes. We don't yes. want to be hurt again. And so we want to be in control because we figure if we are in control, we wouldn't hurt ourselves. But that is the saddest mistake you could make because, you know, sometimes we are deceived. We are hurting ourselves and we don't know. All right. So think of all of the alcoholics, think of all of the drug addicts, think of all of the rageaholics, right? We can hurt ourselves and be fooling ourselves thinking, that, hey, you know, I will never hurt myself. I'm just, you know, so we, we, it's good to be intentional in recognizing where we need to grow. That's powerful. That's really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. Recognizing where, where you're at and knowing where you need to grow. Because God says simply, you know, you're like, I keep it biblical. If you cannot submit, and this is for everybody, if you cannot submit to your husband, who represents God in the relationship to you, who you could see, it's going to be harder to submit to God who you cannot see. It's going to be harder. It's going to be harder. Right. So um, when I say submit, I don't mean be a, a doormat. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. that's being foolish. I'm talking about, you know, I think somebody mentioned it, not not arguing much. But also that means that doesn't mean to run away from a conflict. You want to resolve the conflict. Right. But mm -hmm. if at the time you, you are hot headed and you're upset, yes, you want to step back. You know, say, you know what, can we talk about this another hour? I just need to pray about it. You know, you want to step back. Right, but don't you don't want to ignore the argument because what the other person is going to read is not that you are ignoring the argument, but you are ignoring me, mm. and that makes things worse. Right, so that's where effective communication, because a lot of us, all of us here, communicate all day long with our spouses and our our loved ones, but is it effective? Are we getting through? Are we making a connection? Right? And I always go back to the, the, the analogy of if you are driving and your phone is dead or dying, the battery is dead or dying, and you, you plug the, the cord to the phone and you keep driving, when you get to where you're going, your phone will be dead because it wasn't connected to the power source. Right? So, so And then you're going to lose connection. Or if you're driving... Uh, a while ago, Sister Pompey, I'm not sure if she's at home aware, but she was talking, you know, we, we were communicating, but we lost connection. And I'm sure she kept talking, but we didn't hear her because we lost connection, right? And in our relationship, that happens. We are talking, we are, everybody's yapping, blah, 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 blah. 
<laughs> but there's no connection because everybody has up a shield. Yeah. You know, and the words are just bouncing off. And you give, you know, like how we say, I, I, I give them the, the last piece of my mind. You give all yeah. your mind away. And now you're left foolish because you have no more mind. <laughs> and you think that the, the person got the point and it just bounced off because they shut down on you. And tomorrow, the next day, the same thing happens. But wait a minute, you get more mad now, not realizing that it takes two to tango. <laughs> it takes two hands to clap. Yeah. All right? So I just thought I would add that. All right, all right. And I, I don't want to talk too much today. I want you guys to talk today. I'm just trying to put in a few points here and there. All right. Anybody else? Have you? How have you applied any of the teachings in your own marriage or relationships? Mm. All right. Nobody else. All right. We will move. That's all right. That's all right. All right. So now we're going to do group reflection, right? Group reflection. And uh, so I want to share some of the common themes or insights that emerged from the discussion, right? Um, for question one, uh, what we have in common? We have listen, we have wait. Uh, God has to be the center. God has to be the glue. So, so that's common, right? God has to be the center. God has yeah. to be the glue. Uh, tell me what else you hear common. So we have listen, wait, uh, mutual respect and understanding, effective communication, uh, when you help others, you grow as well. Love is doing for the other person. Uh, loyalty, commitment. Take your time before marriage. Marriage is a growing process. Did you hear anything else that was common? No? All right. So the main thing then that was common is God has to be the center. God has to be the glue. And I think weight um, we'll go with take your time before marriage Amen. Yeah. and marriage is a growing process. And, you know, one of the things you don't want to do, that's why before a lot of my seminars, I would say there are two things you need to know. One, take notes, right? The shortest pencil is longer than the longest memory. And mm -hmm. even during the seminars, I've been saying that take notes, take notes, take notes. And two, stay away from the five worst words in the world. And those five worst words, Ah, oh, I've heard that before. So if you've been married for a long time, the temptation is, oh, please, what does he know? He, he's only married for 20 years. Yeah, he, he had the book sense, but, you know, and you shut down your mind from learning, from being teachable. And you come off the platform and you make the same mistake you've been making all along again, because you close your mind to not growing and learning. Right. That, that's very dangerous. That's dangerous. All right. So the two common things we have is to, uh, God has to be the center. He has to be the glue to wait, right? Marriage is a growing process. Uh, take your time before marriage, right? All right. So, um, second part, uh, question um, two. Pastor, yes. and maybe add too, that uh, read the Bible together, have devotions before you get married. And he still, you know, don't do it just before you did, but do it while you're married because sometimes some people feel like you know she's a bible going person so mm -hmm. they gotta appeal to her or appeal to him as a bible going person but once they get married then the truth comes out so just make sure you do it for a substantial bit of time and you'll know if they start getting tired and leery of it and they don't want to do it you'll know if they're pretending <laughs> or not yeah 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 that's important but i would say that that should happen at the last stage Right, so you have gen generalizing where I see you in the choir, I see you at church. I'm just talking with you as a friend. There's no hand holding, no tongue, no tongue fighting, none of that stuff. Right, we're not on the phone <laughs> past nine o'clock. You know, the, I, I, I'm not trying to practice to be a gynecologist. I, I'm not giving you any massage, nothing like that. Right, then the next stage, socializing where we go out in groups, not couples, but in groups. Mm. All right, with friends who are watching the person that, that to, to see what you cannot see, right? Amen. Uh, and Amen. you're still not getting too close yet. You're watching, you're praying. And when it comes to the, the personalization stage, the courting stage, right? Notice at no point we're dating. At no point, dating is not for Christians. 
right? Dating means I go out tonight with um, uh, Winsome, and then I go out tomorrow night with Gracie. I go out for Saturday night with, with Kefi. That's dating, Amazing. right? That's one on one where you know we're both playing games. We're in some dark corner. I want to see how far I could go. Touch your finger, touch your hand, and once touching gets involved, you lose all objectivity. Amazing. Right? That that is science. You lose all objectivity. Right? So the process is generalizing, socializing. The last stage is courtship, personalizing. And by this stage, you have a good idea of who this person is. You won't know everything, but you have a good idea to make a decision. Is this the person I want to spend the rest of my life with? And you're still praying, and God is showing you. But the thing is, for some of us, God begins to show us, and we That's put cool. our hands over our eyes, and or, or put our head in the sand like an ostrich, and then pretend we don't see because there's something we like about the person, we feel as though we have waited for so long to find somebody who would, would like me and there's nobody mm -hmm. else. So no matter what they do, I'm going to accept it. Right? Mm. And some of us don't have a list. I, I, I'm starting a new program with, with Sister Kefi, pretty, uh, Sister Marlene, uh, pretty soon, right? We're doing some live coaching, coaching sessions, right? Because most of us here on this line who are married, I'm, I'm, I'm sure about it. Before you got married, you never had a list written down of the things you want in, in the other person. And on the top of the list, you had the non-negotiables, right? And, mm -hmm. and so when somebody come along, you just attach to them, and you don't have an idea what you're looking for. So you grab the first one eye, two teeth man or woman, you're fine because you're lonely, <laughs> yeah, right? Man. You have no list. And you, know, you, you behave like Adam, you know, if this Eve goes, that's it for me, right? That means you're not trusting God. You're not trusting I God. A, I had a verbal list. I just told God what I wanted. You know, mm -mm, written written list, said. written list, written list. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Written list. When it's verbal, when it's verbal, it's it's in your subconscious mind or in your frontal lobe. And there's too much stuff in your mind going around. It needs to be on paper where you can read it objectively, mm. Right? Yes, mm -hmm. you want to have an idea in your mind, but having paper, you write it down. When you write it down, you think more of your senses to remember it. Yes. And the first two or three things, the list ought to be long, about 10 things or so for the longest, but the first three or four things or two or three things must be non-negotiables. I'm not going to get with anybody who is not a Seventh-day Adventist or, or whatever religion you are. Mm. Right? Because the Bible is clear. Can two uh, walk together Wonderful. unless they be agreed? Be not unequally yoked. I mean, so if you start disobeying God from the onset mm. and you're praying to God for guidance, God will say, hey, 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 we're not communicating effectively. Because I already gave him my written word. God said, I didn't give you the mental word. I gave you in writing. You can read it. Don't be unequally yoked. And if you start to disobey me, then I I I'm done the conversation because you're not mm -hmm. starting off with me. Right, but if you find yourself now in a situation where you have disobeyed God or ignored God, don't feel too overwhelmed. Go to God even now. That might be my twenty-five years. Ask God for forgiveness and ask Him to show you the way forward. Amen. Right? If like if like Abigail, God decides to close his or her eye to set you free, God will do it. But let God close your eye, okay? Don't, you don't close the eye for them. You got me? All right. Let God do the closing. Amen, amen, amen. All right, all right. All right, so. How long, I'm sorry. Can I say one more thing? How long does each stage uh, last? I mean, how long? Good question. Good question. I, I, was, I was hoping somebody would ask, but I wasn't going to give you the answer unless you ask. Good, good, good. So it depends on your level of maturity. So, for example, in the generalization stage, uh, you know, you're 18, you're 19, you, you're, unless, well, for a female, female mature faster than men do. So mm -hmm. a woman 18, a man 25 is on about the same maturity level, right? Wow. So that's why you don't look for a guy one or two years older than you when you're younger because he hasn't matured yet. That's right. All right. 
of course, once they pass those ages and they move on, you know, it, it changes. The dynamics could change. But generally, uh, it depends on your level of maturity. So if you meet somebody and you're 19, you're 25, whatever it is, uh, you, you, you're going to say, hey, you know what? I like you. No, 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 no. You, you, make, you build a friendship. You want the person to be relaxed. You want to see them in their own atmosphere. There's no pretense going on. Yeah. Right. And so the stage could last uh, from three months to six months, again, depending on how often you guys talk, you know, how often you see the person. If the person is in church, you might see them once a week. So, you know, it, it depends. There is no rush. The main thing is to build a friendship to see if we can go to the next stage. Right. Of socializing and the socializing. Uh, you, you have seen the person some more. You kind of figure, well, yes, you know, I like. Sharon, I like Suzanne, I like um, Hazel. We're all in the same group, but I'm watching. I've made no attachments, right? I, I haven't bought any birthday gifts, nothing like that. I'll be just friends going in groups now, right? So first we were just generalizing in church, in the choir. Now we, we were, we're going in groups to a picnic, church picnic, whatever it is, you know, we're having fun, blah, blah, blah. Now, another three to six months. And the last, again, depending on your maturity and your age, the last stage is a personalizing stage. This stage is dangerous because you could begin to feel as though, hey, you know, the person, this is the one I want to have. We, we've gotten engaged and we just drop your guards. Right? It's very dangerous because now, you know, you might give a little birdie spack on the lips or the cheeks, you know, you might hold hands a little bit. Even then you have to be careful because that touching the prolonged touching is going to awake feelings inside. And because you're so close to getting married, you figure, hey, you know, what's the big deal, that's right? True. And that's where the devil is going to catch you. Doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your age. You know, you, everybody has feelings. And once you are engaged in sexual contact, that feeling doesn't go away, right? So if you've been married before and you figure, hey, you know what? I got this. You, you want to be careful. You want to be very careful. That's all the devil wants to hear. Nobody has you, because you have dropped your guard. Right? You say, hey, I'm big like an elephant. You know, that lion can, can, can bite me, please. And you drop your guard. And you sit on, sit on uh, in the grass to eat, and the lion come and bite you in the throat. All right? So you, you want to be careful. So each stage depends on your level of maturity, um, your age, your experience. And at the last stage of courtship, you don't want to be in each other's space past 9 p.m., especially if you both live alone, right? It's called the bewitching hour. From 10 o'clock, your brain begins to shut down and you lose objectivity. In fact, your body begins to shut down for sleep and you can't think straight. So you don't want to be in anybody's house uh, past 9 p.m. In fact, you don't want to be there if the person lives alone. There's too much risk of temptation. I don't care how holy you are. I don't care if you bathe with Bible water every day. You don't want to. Uh, the Bible says God is not mocked. Okay? You, you don't want to play with that, with that kind of fire. You don't. All right? So I hope that answered your question. Yes, you have. Thank you so much. All right. Good, good, good. All right. So we, we looked at Boaz and Ruth, Abraham and Sarah, Abraham and Hagar. For the for the um the lessons and last last question um I'm trying to find similarity somebody said stop arguing um the other person's opinion matters um I've had good arguments focus on positivity agree to disagree so I think those three can go together so you know I, I was every every week I reflect I say Lord I have a list of couples that I want to talk about every week but I always pray and ask God for guidance. And God said, no, this week, just have them talk, have them reflect, because it's good to get information. But if you don't process the information, if you don't apply the information, yeah. it's a waste of time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, th so that's what I wanted, wanted to do today. And I hope today it was valuable to you, the reflection. I wish more people would talk. I'm not sure why we're playing se mm -hmm. Secret Service Police and <laughs> saying to ourselves, it, it doesn't benefit you. Or the other person and it's good to write in the in the uh in the in the chat, but we want to talk. We want to talk. We didn't come to chat, we come to talk. 
right? We want to hear your voice, uh, lend your experience. One word you might say can help somebody else, all right? Help somebody else. So um, we will see how the Spirit leads uh, for next week. Um, I think I can give you a, a hint. Next week, I was going to talk about, um, no, no, we already talked about Abraham. And, did we talk about Ahab and Jezebel already, right? Didn't we? Yeah, we did. We did. We did. We did. So next week might be about Hosea and Goma. And uh, on and the next three weeks after that, two weeks after that, we'll talk about Ananias and Sapphira. Somebody asked about uh, that couple. So we haven't reached them as yet. All right. But um, so how have you, have you found the sessions to be going? And did you get value from today's reflective session? I mean, I personally did. I think that going well, uh, because you you put it in perspective. You, you you pull out the couples in the Bible amongst all the information that's in there, and you narrowing it down to marriages, and where the couples can focus on marriage, even those that are not married, they can still reap some benefits from those lessons uh, to have before they get married, and even apply in their marriage. So. I think they're going good. I think they're beneficial. Personally, I do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Anybody else quickly? Yeah. I find I find that, that it is a guide that we that we needed before marriage, but thank God it's still applicable after marriage. So all the biblical reference because well, for me somehow the Bible is more used about wife submit. It's like that's the only thing in there about marriage. So this all this session all these sessions actually brought alive that the entire Bible, every couple in the Bible is about marriage and how we can move forward by avoiding some of their mistakes and following the good that they did. Okay. Now, 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 mm -hmm. the, 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 don't miss, don't miss that important. Yes, um, most pastors or whoever will talk about submit, but that doesn't negate the fact that submitting is very important. All right, it's very important, uh, both for for both of them, but also for the woman. And we saw from Abigail that somebody reflected on how she uh, submitted to her foolish husband and let God lead. Let God lead. And we thought we saw the outcome. All right. So let's not miss that. Um and that important point of submitting, of submitting, of submitting. And as unto God, of course. As unto God. All right. Uh, anybody else? Yes, I've learned a lot, Pastor. I'm still learning. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he, I regard marriage, even our relationship with God, it's a marriage. I regard it as a marriage, you know. Mm -hmm. We are married to him first. And in so doing, we will stand a better chance of having a successful marriage. Amen, 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 amen. All right, so I want to reinforce the importance of community support that's why i'm saying why it's good to put it put it something in the chat and in, in this forum we prefer that you know we would share vociferously uh to each other because we want to build community support and we want to learn from um uh, one another so i while i may have many answers i don't purport to have all of the answers right that's what we want to share i'm just here to guide the session you know, to give input here and there, but I wanted to be able to share with each other. All right. So um, it's time for us to close and want to have prayer. I think I saw one prayer request uh, in the chat. I think I saw one prayer request in the chat um, from Doreen, uh, Doreen Faith, Hope, and Love. Please keep my family in special prayers especially me, uh, camera, thanks in advance. I think that's the only prayer I saw. I'm going to show there's another one. The only prayer I saw. All right. So we want to, to close off 
in prayer. Um, we want to thank God for the lessons that we have learned. And even while I'm sharing, I'm reinforcing what I know and learning from you as well. All right? We want to thank God for the lessons learned and the sharing of the testimonies. All right? And I want to tell you before we pray to continue applying the principles in your marriages. And if you have forgotten what we talked about, you didn't take notes, go back to the videos, take notes, take notes. It will benefit you and help you to help somebody else. All right, so continue applying the principles in your marriages and to support each other in this journey, right? Marriage is not a destination, like some people think. It's a journey, it's a journey. All right, so we want to pray now. Um, are there two volunteers that would like to pray before I pray to close off? Are there two volunteers? Two okay. brief, brief, pray, oh. brief prayers. Okay. Brief, brief, brief. All right, that's one. Uh, do we have another one, another volunteer to pray? Is there another? Is there another? We're thanking God for the lessons that we have learned, testimonies, and asking him to reinforce uh, the important lessons in our own hearts and minds. Okay. Going once, going twice, another volunteer. I right, says, go right ahead. I'll, I'll pray after you. Go right ahead. Amen. Our oh, Father, we thank you for being in the midst, Lord. We ask for forgiveness of our sins, known and unknown, at thou word, deed, and nation. Lord, we ask that you continue to reinforce uh, what we've learned in these lessons, Lord. I'm thanking the pastor for these lessons in the time that he's put so diligently to bring them to us, Lord. And, and this patience and endurance that he's given along with these lessons, Lord, and the knowledge that you've given him to share with us. We ask that we continue to take these lessons, listen to them, Lord, and then apply them, be hearers and doers, Lord. Apply it in our lives. Help somebody else share with others, as he said, to uh, rest, to reflect, to encourage, to share, and, and to give testimony, for we are overcome by our testimonies, Lord. Help us to help somebody else. Help us to be a blessing to someone else as we are blessed by these lessons that the pastor so diligently give to us each week, Lord, this 10 weeks that he's given them to us. Lord, and continue to help us to continue to show forth our gratitude, Lord, as we, uh, re as we thank him for what he's doing for us. And, and thank you, Lord, for how you continue to bless him and in his family. Be with the prayer line, Lord. Be with those asking for special requests for prayer. You know the situations, Lord, and you know what they need more than we do. Lord, speak and, and touch where it's all necessary. Do for us what we can do for ourselves. Be with the marriages, the couples that are on this line right now today, Lord, that, that are contemplating marriage. And those that are married have been seasoned married people, Lord. Help their marriage continue to grow in you, Lord, as we continue to apply these, these messages and learn more about you each and every day and each session that we are learning. We thank you for the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding that you've given each one of us. And we pray that we continue to learn more of you, to be more like you each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful uh, for your presence uh, with us today, for showing up and showing out for all those who were, were online uh, in different countries, different places, and even for those that would see this recording. We thank you for being involved in each home and each life, uh, being with each person here. For the Thank you for the breakthroughs that they're having in their relationships, those who are contemplating marriage. Thank you, Lord, for allowing them to learn uh, what we didn't have a chance to learn properly before we got married. Mm -hmm. But thank you for uh, for them being able to learn. And Lord, they have no excuse. They have no excuse uh, if, they go, if they go off course. But even, Lord, when we go off course, the Holy Spirit bring, brings us back into harmony with you. And even now, I pray mm -hmm. and thank you for all the marriages here. It doesn't matter the amount of years uh, we've been married, Lord. We, we want to put those years in our marriage you know we want the years to be prosperous and even where we have fallen short lord help us yeah. to learn not to beat up ourselves and live in the past but to learn 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 from the past and learn from our, our past experiences and grow and fail forward thank you for blessing sister marlene where she's at right now sister Kathy, yeah. uh, the other speakers on this platform 
Um, I thought I saw Pastor McCoon for a while, bless him as well as he prepares to speak uh, on tomorrow. Bless all of the participants that come out every day to support the various speakers. Thank you, Lord, for the prayers that are offered on this platform every day. And Lord, we really want your Holy Spirit to inveigle and encourage uh, the participants to testify more of your goodness, to testify, to, to, to believe that whatever they're learning by your Holy Spirit, they'll be able to implement in their lives. And they come prepared with a testimony to share with others who might be weak, yeah. who may have missed, that we could really be a community of support. Thank you for blessing us the rest of this day. We give you and you alone all the honor, glory, and praise. Yeah. For Christ's sake, amen. 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 And everyone, um, so probably in the next uh, eight amen. weeks or so, um, we may have another session like this to reflect, but I want to encourage you to take notes every session, um, come with your questions, uh, and let us share and grow together and allow God to have our marriages be a good influence in our communities. Yeah, yeah. People are watching us. People are watching us. Mm -hmm. All right. So there, there won't be any music today. Yes, I have music. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Sister Kefi. You saved me. You saved me. All right. I so, want so you to know, too, you've been a blessing to me. Uh, we had a little conflict recently. Mm -hmm. And then the Holy Spirit said,